and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 163. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James. Hello. Hey James, how are you doing, man? Not very well. Oh no, what happened? Well, despite the uh, fundraising stream being a huge success, it knocked me out for a loop and now I am not feeling all that well. I guess adrenaline withdrawal or something, I don't know. I have been feeling quite down as of late. Probably the adrenaline rushing out of your system. It'll be back there. It'll be back there. So, anywho, also joining us today is Rom. Hello, all you happy people. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Ah, cool. Watch the first 15 episodes of Steven Universe. <laughs> yay. I uh, cried for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yay. You're, you're getting better, man. You're getting better. Yes. So anyway, our guest for this week, our representative for Everfree Northwest, B Pendragon and Flipsy Satu? Flip Saute. Oh, Flip Saute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about it's, that. It's okay, it's a dumb cooking joke. <laughs> 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 so how are you guys? I'm doing quite well. Um just got up. I'm in Missouri, so I've been up for a few hours, so that's pretty good for me today. I can't remember if I slept last night. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a late night at down at the uh, Everfree offices. We were putting some stuff together. Yeah, just watching cartoons and generally being, you know, responsible adults. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, responsible adults. Yay! So anyway, before we start, I need to ask you the four important question. And question number one is favorite character. Um, that's a tough one. I'd have to choose between Sunset Shimmer, Twilight Sparkle, and Princess Luna. It's one of those three. They're like my top three altogether up there. Not bad, not bad. Good choices. And you, Flips? Um, it would actually have to be kind of a 50-50 split between um, Sweetie Belle and Rarity. Although mostly Rarity because Tab of the Saint Germain is an absolutely amazing person. Do you follow her Twitter? If you don't, you don't, to. you should. Oh my god, it is the best Twitter in the world. And 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 she'll be at Everfree. Ooh, yes, she will. That's cool. I want to fly there now. Why can't I afford it? <sighs> so, favorite episode? Favorite episode? Um, not really sure. I really like Luna Eclipse. The the original uh, pilot, the two-part for the pilot is really good, as well as I really like uh, Bats, I guess would be, that kind of be my top three or four. Off the top of my head, um, Equestria Games, near the end of last season, I really, really enjoyed it. You know, Miss Harsh Whitney is a fantastic character, and um, I pretty much died laughing listening to the whole... Um, Cloudsdale anthem bit. Oh, really? No, you were laughing. I mean, I was really feeling uncomfortable about it. <laughs> it John Fraud? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. So, here, here's another question. How did you guys get into the show? Um, I actually came in through the Phineas and Ferb fandom. I was in a chat channel for that. It would have been four years, one week, and one day ago, April 17th. So right after Cutie Mark Chronicles itself aired, but they were beginning to give the first little glimpses at the best night ever, somebody posted um, somebody posted a link to uh, the best part, one of the clips of the best night ever. I saw that. Next thing I knew, it was um, the sun was coming up, and I had finals in the morning. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, I had watched I had watched half the season in one night. Oof, wow. So that's Ref from the Phoenix and Foot fandom. Hmm, okay. Myself, I actually I've been a longtime member of the Something Awful Forums, which is a just internet thing. And um sometime around um, you know November, December of uh twenty eleven I started seeing a whole bunch a whole bunch of people with uh pony avatars. I was like, okay, well, that looks interesting, I guess. I'll look into it, and, you know, here I am now. Hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing you're not regretting every step of the way. Yeah. So, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? They really don't care. My mom, my mom when, it when it first was happening, my mom was like, 
dude, are you okay? It's like, no, I'm cool. And then when Everfree, and then especially after Everfree 2012 happened, because I believe Flips, has, Flips, I believe you've been working the end for ever since 2012, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. So yeah, Flips and I both started when Everfree started, and after that first, after that first, um, that first convention season, my mom and everybody was totally okay with it because it gave me a great out a great uh, way to uh, help other people through the convention. They either don't know, don't care, or um, just see that I am handling a large amount of money and being <laughs> responsible, and that's good enough for them. Yay! Large amount of money. <laughs> so, um, you guys are working or part of Everfree Northwest. So, what are your roles? I am co-director of productions, and I also run our Reddit account. So if you see Everfree NW, that's our Reddit account. And if you see Pendragon the Great, that's me. And sometimes I act, I forget to accidentally flip between the two before I post. <laughs> oh, wow. So what does your role do? For, on the Reddit end, it's mostly it's interact with the fandom and um, make announcements that on the code, as co-director of productions, I help make sure that all of our panels, all of our concerts go off without a hitch when it comes to the audio visu- video aspect, the sound aspect. Um, we've got a great we've got a great group uh, that are specifically working just on the panels themselves to make sure that they go out that they go fine. So my my role is kind of I I sit behind a soundboard and I tell other people what to do to make sure everything goes properly. Ah. So, cool, you're one of the guys in charge. Yay! What about you, Flip? I am the financial director for the convention, so pretty much anything that involves money, I give oversight, make sure people are being responsible, and you know, I get the added benefit of, you know, at the end of the convention, I take all of that um, lovingly given money and um, get to throw up it in the air and roll around it <laughs> in the uh, before bringing it to the bank. <laughs> Yeah. Really, isn't Why that am I never about? invited to these things? <laughs> but in all seriousness, I um I provide oversight over uh the con store, registration, our charity department, and a couple other uh sectors of the convention. And it's it's a lot of fun working with a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds. Oh, all right, cool. So for people who don't know when's the convention date and whatnot, could you well, give them a brief explanation and stuff? Um, yeah, the convention is going to be the last weekend in May. That is May 29th to the 31st at the Seattle Airport Hilton uh, Conference and Hotel and Convention Center. I don't know. It's something like that. It is literally right across the street from the airport. You get off your plane, you pick up your luggage, you walk half a mile, and you're at the, and you're at the convention space. You cross that a little sky and you're there. That is super convenient. <laughs> it is extremely convenient. Especially mm-hmm. for travelers like us. <laughs> we go there and like, ah, my hotel's book. Okay, let's sleep for a few hours. Party time. Let's go. So I, I see you guys have been around for four years now? We have. Wow. Mm-hmm. So oof, four years. Like, that, that is, that's Ooh. awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, at the same place, right? Our first year, we were split across two hotels, um, and then our and then starting in 2013 through this year, we are at the Hilton, which is actually kind of between the two hotels we were in our first year. <laughs> ah, I, I'm guessing um, the Hilton really loves you guys. They're fans. <laughs> yeah. Yay! You bring in the monies. Yeah. Oh, man, but that first year, a little story behind that, if you'll indulge me. Mm-hmm. Um, our first year, we were only expecting 300 people. We hit that 300 cap really quickly. <laughs> so we talked with the hotel. We extended it a little bit to 500 people or something for the venue. We hit that. And about we- three or four months before the... Uh, for the convention, we had to um, expand to a second venue, which, as far as I've heard from many, many other convention runners, that's something that has not really been pulled off successfully before in like fan conventions in general. It was a I... crazy, stupid move, but it happened, and it worked, and we had 1,500 people that first year, and we just, oh, 
date was. What was what was the joke in the what was the joke among the staff? A convention so nice it sold out thrice. <laughs> yep. How do you manage the overload? Like, how do you manage to get that many people right in the first year and make things go so uh, so swimmingly? Because from the videos that I saw of the convention, you guys seem to run a very tight ship. We have incredibly dedicated staff, and they just. It's amazing what kind of uh, quality work you can get out of people when they really care about what they're doing. Yeah, I think I want to say that probably about half of our staff this year has been staffed since the first year, at least that amount. Because we all love we all love the show and we all love uh, running the convention so much that every year we just keep coming back. What is your criteria when it comes to um? saying yes or no to the people that go to your convention as vendors? Well, it goes through a uh, couple stages. Um, first and foremost, we are a very strict PG and underrated convention because we pride ourselves on our family friendliness. So before we look at anything else, we look to see if you're going to be selling wares that um, are going to go over those guidelines, which we do have nice and clearly... Um, laid out on our website. Beyond that, it's the order that they came in and just their their table needs. And we try and get a good mix of vendors, some new, some old. And unfortunately, we just don't have the space to get everybody in. We consistently have almost twice as many people apply as we have spaces. Mm-hmm. And really, I mean, the the hardest part of it is, you know, having to tell people no. Of course, because yeah. you, if, if it was in your hand, you will accept everybody because, hey, come on, everybody has the chance to, uh, deserves the chance to sell their stuff and be at the convention and all that, but sometimes you cannot do it. Yeah. I mean, we do encourage people that, you know, if they want to give, um, give just vending for, like, their first time in, in the area, just a little try. We try to offer some half tables. That's been pretty popular with, uh, with some newer artists. And uh, we just have all sorts of other ways that um, artists can contribute, show off their wares, and uh, you know get their uh, get their name out there. Like uh, I believe in a couple of days we have our um, con book cover contest ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. ends that ends tomorrow at midnight Pacific, eleven fifty nine p.m. Uh, Pacific time on the 26th. But if I do remember right, if you, well, if you missed the chance to enter the contest, there is still ad space for the con book, right? There certainly is. So uh, how much is that and what, well, try to sell it to me. What's the benefit of it? <laughs> well, we're a convention that last year we had 2,600 people. So your ad will be seen by at least 2,600 people, most likely. And um, because everybody yeah. gets everybody gets a con book when they when they pick up their badge, um, so which has of course all these ads that are being sold as well as all the information about the convention itself. Hmm, so that's insane. Yeah. So, uh, how much is it for ad space? Uh, it depends on what size you're getting. Um, it ranges from fifty dollars for a quarter page, which would be a three by four. Up to 160 for a full page, which is about uh, which is about six and a half by eight and a quarter, a little bit less than that. Um, a half page running running about ninety dollars. Hmm. All right. All right. So if I'm interested, where do I send this? I, I think it's and design it. and flips. <laughs> yep. Um. Yeah. You can send in your um your request for a um for an ad space to design at everfreenw.com. And they will forward it along to me. So you'll probably hear from me if you um, you pop in there and be like, "Okay, give me money." <laughs> okay, I have money. Can I can I go now? <laughs> and then our dedicated design team will help you get your ad just looking absolutely perfect for the con book. Oh, cool, cool. Because hmm, I might do this probably if I have the extra cash. Hmm, then I should be in a con book. Yay. <laughs> But besides that, besides that, uh, you guys are well known for your pony stock concerts too, right? Oh yeah, 
Uh, it's our Pony Stock concert is our big concert every year. It takes place over both Friday night and Saturday night. We've had some really great acts in the past. Um, this year we've got uh, we've got some nice acts lined up. In the past we've had people like um, we've had Yuri Brony, we've had um, I Be a Brony rapper. Pony One Kenobi, who I believe is coming back this year, kind of a who's who in uh, pony music. Ah, cool. So, do you guys have any? Well, could you leak us any information about who will be coming? Norman. Hey, I mean, I'm mean, just asking. Who knows? Maybe some equality, probably. You know. Yeah. Nope. We just actually did just announce Kelly Sheridan, the voice actor for Starlight Glimmer from the season five premiere. That that announcement just went out yesterday, so that's uh, that that is relatively breaking news. Yay! See, it doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> and we are still working on that portal to Equestria, and you know, from there, I guess we'll have to enter contract negotiations with Princess Celestia. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's just a real pain going through bureaucracy when it comes to horses, you know. Yeah, it, it's never easy. It's amazing what happens if you accidentally slightly misplace your left rear foot. Um, you can change the meaning of a you can change the meaning of a sentence immediately. <laughs> oh my! Interesting. So uh, also also I'm seeing in the list that you have John Delancey, the voice of Discord or Q from Star Trek, and that's just wow! How did you guys pull that off? We blackmailed him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, he has actually wanted to come to our convention for a little while now, but unfortunately our previous dates fell on an annual boat trip that he was taking. Ah, uh, being around the 4th of July weekend as it was. Yeah. Well, yeah. this time you have a pretty good date, so that's awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with our date. So I have the cheat here in front of me, and the list of guests that you will be having besides Kelly Sheridan... So I see also you had um, John Delancey, Nicole Oliver, Tabitha, well, Tabitha's coming, and Lee, uh, Jason Thiessen, Vic Jamila, and one tier that I'm really impressed, Bonnie Zakadish? Yeah. Yep. Wow, like, oof. I, I am tempted to ask, how did you guys pull that one off? Blackmail, again. <laughs> Our uh, guest relations department just works magic. I don't. I don't ask how it happens. I just ask them <laughs> to talk into the microphone. Hmm. Blackmail, probably. <laughs> but no, not really. But still, like she being there, oh, I just can't wait to see any panels. Like, w- would you guys be doing any panels with them? I would assume so. Yeah, events has not released their current list. Um, hmm. I've talked with them a little bit, and um, it is my understanding that as with previous years, there's going to be. There's going to be panels with the VAs. I mean, that's a pretty standard. Oh, Mm -hmm. and with the special guests, that's a pretty standard thing for a convention. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know any. I don't know any specifics yet, though. Uh, It's okay. It's okay. I mean, if we the bet, how to put this? Um, it's better to be surprised when you go there, and like it'll be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and we'll be having our we'll be having our initial events list out at least a couple weeks before the convention. We try and make sure that happens, so you can start planning on what you want to do before you get there. When it comes to inviting people that work on the show, do you usually aim for like the big shots, or do you try to get anybody, like from the people that work on the animation department? I'm not saying that people that work on the animation department are less important, but you know, people usually remember the names of Tara Strong, John Delancey, and Ashley Ball more than the names of the people that animate the, the actual show. So uh, w- what's your criteria to follow when it comes to inviting people? As long as guest relations stay in their budget, I... <laughs> Everyone's happy? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just... as, as long as I stay in my budget, Flips is happy, what? I'm production, yeah. No. But yeah. <laughs> Budgets, they're nice. I, I like them. They, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I mean, we tried to get a, just a decent spread, just a reasonable representation of folks that work with the show, folks that people want to see, and some folks that are just, you know, th- at the very least, outright fun to have around. I, for oh, one, yeah. am really looking forward to having Lee Tokar back. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, is, he, is, he, is a, he is a he is an absolute ba- blast. Um, last year, we had Rebecca Schweikett. And she was she was so much fun to work with. 
and that's one of the things that's you you want to have people who are fun and approachable to just be around as well i guess is yeah part of it hmm it's easy to say fun to work with then yeah oh, yeah oh awesome 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 so um you guys be having john delancey this year right so this is the first year right yeah this is our first year with john delancey yes oh cool yep. cool is there any way for people to say thank you or well maybe write a letter to him i did post something about that <laughs> um there is a there is a dear john letter session something or other um i've read about it and i've looked at it i just haven't looked too close at it i know it's happening <laughs> So, if I'm not mistaken, it's you guys and I Love Kim Possible a lot that's running the Letter to Discord project, right? So, it's like, if I'm not mistaken, collecting your the letters and giving them to John Delancey at this year's Everything Northwest? But yeah, no, we're doing a uh, Letters to Discord thing this year um, with, in conjunction with I Love Kim Possible a lot. Collecting letters, you can send them in. I'm going to get this link dropped in the show notes or wherever you put notes. And, uh, yeah, you don't actually need to be attending the convention to submit a letter, uh, but we do need those in by May 19th. Oh, wow. So that's only a few weeks away then. Wow, okay. Please don't remind me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, please, re- please remind me. I graduate, I, I graduate from college on Mother's Day. I run back <laughs> to Seattle and I run a convention. Oh, wow. Oh well, at least you guys be having fun. Yeah, no, no pressure. You're only have you're only going to have thousands of people attending your convention. It, it's going to be fine. Yep, yep. All oh, those fans going to the convention, having fun, judging your <laughs> management and making sure that there is nothing wrong. Stop! We're being pinkies. Uh, you, you guys, you guys are sure gonna pull it off like you have been doing for a while. You are one of the most veteran conventions in the fandom. Like, mm-hmm. I'll say that the only convention that has been doing this for longer than you guys have been is uh, BronyCon. Mm-hmm. But that's because yeah. they did two conventions in one year. And we're also the convention that's been running the longest as a three-day convention because BronyCon's first couple of conventions were two-day, and their first three-day convention was a month after our first uh, run. Uh-huh. And, well, it seems like you guys are doing a great job. And, well, if you want to write letters to Discord, uh, links are in the show notes. For those of us who cannot afford going to the con, because, I mean, I have to be realistic here, I will never be able to go there because I don't have the budget to afford it. Uh, are you guys going to work with any Brony streaming media website to uh, stream the panels and, uh, and show them, or uh, is it going to be kept within the convention walls? Um, I can say that we are in talks um for that, but we are also definitely going to be recording our main panels. I've got a great camera crew staff under me that will be running the cameras for that. So we'll definitely be recording those to put up on Facebook later, even if they aren't streamed immediately at the time that they are occurring. Awesome. F- Facebook, not YouTube or YouTube. Uh, uh, um, you- we, all, we have our we have our Everfree Northwest YouTube, and that's where we try and put a lot of our stuff. I'll give you a follow because there is nothing better than after a convention, putting all those panels on a playlist and just play them and listen to the questions while I am working. <laughs> that is that is the best. So, uh, here's one thing that I, me and James probably remember from our first convention experience. Will you guys be scanning any of the questions before letting them go because oh, yeah. yay, because we had bad experience with one guy who asked a question to Dave Paul's Yeah, question, question, question screening. That is one thing that uh, some conventions do. Um, yeah, we'll be doing that. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing that. I, yeah. oh, Good. I believe we've Good. got, I believe we'll have somebody set up on all of them to make sure. Oh, thank yeah, goodness. It, it, it's, it's a good thing. Um, it's, happen more often than not that you let someone ask a question and then they ask about Princess Molestia or they ask about oh, yeah. 4chan or they ask about oh Terrestrum remember when you went to Las Vegas as Unicorn that was awful <laughs> yeah you want to avoid all of those oh yeah sparks. oh yeah yes 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 you, we, wa- we've, you don't want to we've been doing this for a while we 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 know what can happen in a convention yay oh thank yeah. goodness i, I don't yeah, know like, the spaghetti drama this fandom, is, this fandom is wonderful it's awesome and i love it but 
you have to be very careful, or else it gets ruined for everybody, and then true, nobody can have that. nice things. Hmm. So true, so true. So, talking about nice things, uh, I'm looking at your prices here, and they're not bad. No. Uh, we try... Um, we are a family-friendly convention, so we always try to make it accessible to the family. Foles, uh, that is our the kids 12 and under, get in free with a paying adult to make it more accessible to um, to make it more accessible to families. We'll have um, we've got our we've got our weekend pass at sixty dollars, which is about comparable to Emerald City Comic Con, which is up here in the Seattle area, and a couple other conventions in the area. As well as some single day passes, about thirty dollars, uh, depending on the day. Ah, all right. So I do see patron. Um, what was that about? Our um, we do have some slightly higher TR badges. Um, they they're just generally for people that want to, um, you know, show their support of the convention and you know get get some neat little swag out of it as well. So we're giving um, so. Patron badges, which I believe... They are sold are... out. They are sold out. Okay, yes. Patron badges, they get, you know, a, a nice little pack of um, of uh, merchandise, uh, which, you know, that guarantees them that little bit of merchandise. And an autograph voucher. Ah. Yeah. And um, sponsors, you know, they get a few autograph vouchers and a bit more swag... And we got some things that we can't quite yet talk about that'll definitely make those badges worthwhile to have. Hashtag get hype. <laughs> I am getting hype. Wow. Let me see. Is there any dinners yet? Because it seems to be like the past few conventions was about dinner. So probably dinner? Maybe. No. Who knows? I'll just go ahead and loudly hint that, yes, They'll definitely be worthwhile very soon. They'll de- yeah, they'll, they'll, those badges. Yeah, no, you should you should totally get on those uh, those higher tier badges. They're, uh, they're they're nice to have, and uh, they'll don't plus be they, surprised. Plus, they look is... different, so you get to be special because you have a different looking badge. Ooh, and I like to be special. Be Isn't like that them. what it's all about? <laughs> so true. You only go to this convention once in a lifetime, probably. Well, and, some and, unless people... you want to. Yeah, German people kind of go to the convention several times. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pay 350 this year, next year you pay 60 depending on if you like it or not. And if you want to be cheap, you can go for one-day passes, which is 35 to 30 depending on the day. Yeah, so, but Norman, you say cheap when, for some people, that's not all that cheap because you have to pay for an airplane, you have to pay for the hotel room, you have to pay for... Uh, for food and all that, you know, the 35 can turn into something else. Like, the prices of the convention are brilliant. Too bad that air, airplane companies and hotels don't have the same prices. Mm, true. Talking about hotels, do you guys have any deals with the hotels? I believe our, um, I would need to double check, but I believe uh, that I'm pulling our, up, actual, I'm pulling up it, our website now to double check that, oh, actually. Yeah. Go for uh, Everfree I, I, and everfreenw.com will have a lot of the information that we're talking about and probably a little bit even more um, about venue. Um, book, okay. Um, reserve your room now to get a group discount rate. Rooms are available with one king bed or two doubles and start at 139 a night. There is a coupon. There's a group code on the website um, when you, when booking your room. So, you, with the with the discount, it goes down to one thirty nine a night. Which, if you split that between four people, comes out to about one hundred and fifty dollars a person after tax. I would say, depending on how many nights you stay. No, but not bad. Sharing a room is always fun, and saving money is always fun, except for those slight tickets. Arr. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I I know the I know the pain of plane tickets. Um, I was actually slated to help at uh, BabsCon on their productions crew this year. But then the airline that flies out of uh, Branson, Missouri, where I am, they pulled out and flight costs went through the roof and I wasn't able to do it. Ouch. No fun. Not fun at all. 
I'm, I'm just glad that I have enough flyer in, enough flyer miles to get some cheap plane tickets. But still, you need to fly multiple times just to get some crazy discounts. Oh yeah. Mm. So, with any convention, there's going to be charity auctions and whatnot. And this year, you guys be having them too. Yeah, we certainly will. Our charity auction is done to benefit Seattle Children's Hospital, a um, local children's hospital up here, which I guess, you know, you could probably figure out from the name. We have been sending the proceeds from our charity auctions over the past couple of years to them. We have raised over $75,000 for them, or rather the community has. And, you know, we just hand over the comically oversized check. <laughs> Uh, which which is pretty cool, which is pretty cool because that thing, even though it doesn't have any um, monetary value, it does have sentimental value. It is so cool to hold one of those big checks. <laughs> but, yeah, I need no, to get, I need to get in on this. <laughs> you really do, but um, yeah, I mean, last year alone we raised over forty thousand dollars. Oh wow, twenty thousand of that was one item. Ooh, wow, what, what was that? A car? A quilt. It was a quilt. Ooh, wow. Yeah. A bunch of uh, community artists got together. They all designed a um, you know, panel of this quilt. And rumor has it we might see another quilt this year. Hmm. I wish I had money because, what, 20K? Yep. 20K. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'm, I'm posting a link to the DeviantArt page on it in the chat for you to put for you to put on the show notes. All right. So, wow, 20k for a quilt. Hmm, I wonder if no, 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 my is not going to come out today. But still 20 Oof. Th- that is just awesome. It, yeah. it is a very, it is a very nice quilt because it is signed by Lauren it is signed by Lauren Faust if I remember correctly, which in and of itself is adds like Three thousand to the value at times. <laughs> I am yes. I am looking at the quilt right now. Twenty k is little for the quality <laughs> of this quilt. It's beautiful. Yep. yep, I'm looking at it too. And well, I'm wondering where Lauren Faust could sign it. It has it has a screenshots from the show. This on the quilt. It has uh, pictures from the uh, book of the two sisters and the elements of harmony. This is a beautiful quilt. Yeah. No. Um. Talking with the uh, very generous uh, gentleman that uh, purchased it, he came into a lot of money and he wanted to do one big gesture with some of it, and uh, he decided to make it this, and we cannot thank him enough. So wait, was he, did he go uncontested? Um, I believe there was a little bit of, um, you know, a little a, bit of back I, and forth, but, you know, once I hit 20k, I'm pretty sure people... How we did our auction last year is we put all of the items into the silent auction to begin with to go through the the first day and most of Saturday. Then when it came time for the live auction, we just took the top 20 items out of the out of the silent auction and put them into the live auction. It started out the quilt came out of the silent auction at 1600. <laughs> um yeah. Came out of the silent auction at sixteen hundred. That was a starting bid for that was the starting that was the starting uh, go at the for the live auction. Um, it quickly moved up um, three thousand, uh, five thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand, and then it jumped up to from twelve thousand up to twenty thousand. And the entire room was like, "Wait, what just happened?" <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have a video of it? <laughs> Uh, yes, there is somewhere. I'll find it and get it posted. Oh, wow. Poof. That tweet, I, I thought that guy would just have, like, step up, like, 20k! Mine! No, there was, there was actually, there was actually, um, until it hit that 12,000, um, and then he jumped up to 20, it, there was actually a fair amount of competition going on. (laughs) Wow, that, that is awesome. Like, so probably this might make a return again this year? Um, a similar quilt might, yeah. Hmm. Well, I I hope you guys can help the Seattle Children's Hospital like this again because mm, they really need the cash and well, it's for a good cause. Yep. So you said there were twenty items in the silent auction that were pulled out to the live auction. So do you remember any of them? Um. Yeah, there were a 
few that were kind of memorable. Um, there was Silver Slinger had a couple of pieces that got pulled up, like one, like Silver, how Silver Slinger does, does that one of a kind thing. And Silver Slinger will be at Everfree Northwest this next year as one of our community guests. I don't remember exactly everything, but I remember that's how we, that's how we did it. Ah, cool, cool. Talented artists, they do stuff, people like them, so yay, awesome for you guys. So, James, any questions? No, not that I can think of right now. Uh, yes, wish you guys good luck with it. Well, mm-hmm. but I guess at this point, after <laughs> these many years of doing successfully, I guess luck is definitely on your side. True that, true that. So with four years of con experience, uh, how many people or how many volunteers come and go and some of them became part of the crew? I really don't think we're allowed to say. We do have a great staff and we do have a lot of people coming back year after year. Um, like Flips, Flips and I both have said we have been here since, we've been on the staff since 2012. I started out as kind of the lowly AV nerd running around, running wires between the two hotels. And I've moved up and now I've gotten, now I've gotten to the position of co-director of productions. Um, but we have a, we have a great staff and a lot come year to year and we always have a lot of new faces as well, which is always fun. Cool, cool. So I'm guessing that if you guys love conventions or if you guys want to experience conventions, volunteer because you guys could use some more, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Yep, yep. So where's that? Where could they submit their volunteer forms or whatnot? Um, the link is everfreenorthwest.com, everfreenw.com slash volunteer. Um, there is a, um, there is a form there to fill out. Um, we also have a list. There's also a volunteer FAQ, um, link there as well as I believe that there's an open positions link. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a link to the open positions for the positions we still need. And we do need just a lot of general staff to help make sure that this thing happens. I'll be sure to put that in the show notes and make sure people be aware that you guys still need the uh, volunteers. And there are some great benefits to being a volunteer. Um, I will say that. Free food? <laughs> a little bit. Yay! Free food! Why not? More, more, more like free snacks, but yeah. So I'm guessing a lot of media crew or journalist people type are going to go to the con. And talking about journalist people, um, recently BabsCon happened and Playboy went there. Um, I'm guessing without the bunny suits and all, but still, they went there, they reported it, and they seem to like the convention. And wow, um, that's something you don't hear every day. James, what do you think, man? Um, I think that the mentality of the media hating on something that is geek culture uh, is starting to turn into a thing in front of the past. That it, I don't know, I don't know if, what's the name of this radio host that is so flippant and so hyperbolic? Howard Stern. Uh, I like Howard Stern. And I like how he's able to laugh about all of these things because he, he's never taken seriously. But there are some people who actually do. I think that mentality is dying slowly. I'm very happy that the guy doing the article came out of the convention with such a good impression. It could have been so much worse. Can you imagine if this guy went to Las Pegasus? <laughs> oh no! Can you Why did you have to go there? We don't. We don't talk about these things. Can you imagine if he went to Dashcon? Can you imagine? No. That? Like okay, not MLP related, but can you imagine him going to Dashcon? Wow. Oh yeah, no, just no, just no, just no. So but, yeah, he actually but, went to a good convention run by very good people and had a very good experience. Mm-hmm, true. And that's what the article reflects. Yeah, but here's the thing. We also have our friends at Everfree Northwest here. So, you guys, um, if some if Playboy were to go there, would you guys welcome them? As long as they're staying family friendly, it's yeah. fine by me. They, they follow awesome. they follow our rules. They, yeah, it's not our call, but if they follow our rules, I'm perfectly okay with anybody coming in. From what I heard, you guys said in the pre-show, their publication is pretty awesome. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, I mean. I, this is not the first article out of there that I've read, and their articles are actually always extremely well written that I've, that I found. I don't read Playboy regularly. If somebody posts an article saying, Playboy did an article on this, I will go read that article and go on. That's just how I roll. 
Um, what's mm-hmm. interesting is Playboy does or at least did have a Braille edition. So those people could legitimately say they bought Playboy for the articles. <laughs> well, the time spending to read Braille is one thing, but yeah, they, they prove a point. Like, I read it for the articles. So I, I wish you guys the best of luck because, well, I've hit up all of the things I need to ask. And is there anything that we're missing out? I don't think so. I just say get hype. And with that, I, I think we've reached near the end of what we need to be because I'm seeing that you guys are running this con like a well-oiled machine, like a well ship, like a well-produced Avengers movie. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> so, um, I say good luck, guys, because like you said, get hype, get really, really hype because why not, right? Everything's going to run smoothly and uh, there's nothing more I can say. I mean... Go to the show notes, click on the link, and if you can go there, go. Because I've been always saying this from the very start. If you want to have fun at a con, go there. So anyway, um, where can they find you guys? B-Pen. Well, my Twitter is the B Pen Dragon. Um, but I also have a, um, I also have my own radio show for, um, like a broadcast radio show, the Friday Tech Hour with David Camp, which you can find twitter.com slash friday tech wdc or facebook.com slash friday tech wdc so i post weekly on fridays honestly kind of a ramble about science technology news in the geek sector so that's that's always fun um and i'll have a really big episode coming up here on may 8th so that's that's the one i'd look forward to on that one awesome awesome i'll try and invite you on as your own independent person <laughs> Yay. And what about you, Flip Saute? Well, you can find me on uh, Twitter at uh, Flip Saute EF and W. I'll go and uh, drop a link there. Uh, otherwise, you can find me in your hopes, in your dreams, and uh, just out of the corner of your eye. He is always in the corner of your eye, making sure you don't overspend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever gotten one of those strange requests by your guest that asks, for really strange things, like take out the blue M and M's or something like that. I've never come across was, that, but there might. Um, be. I don't think we've run across anything that specific, but I do still occasionally get razzed for um, fulfilling a purchase request for a tea set for the music department, which I later <laughs> found out was because they wanted to have a tea party. <laughs> Yay! Tea you- party. <laughs> Hey, we got a goodwill. It's like ten bucks. I'm not gonna cry over it. This is also the guy who refuses to give me 500 pounds of bacon because I say I need it. <laughs> hey, you will deal with having 497 pounds, and you will like it, Mister. Uh, uh, I I forgot who did that with the M and M's because I wonder who. But God, was it's that a band? band. It, yeah, it's a band it's because it was um. And that was entirely so they would know that the venue actually read the contract. Yeah, so th- that's a good way too. But, uh, you know, some people are strange that way, but um, that's one way to test out your cons. But you guys are running this for years now, so you, I do. I, I trust you guys. I trust you guys. I try to trust me too. <laughs> Yay. Well, anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. And you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. Tweetybot will tweet about getting hype for this episode because you should be hype. And as for me, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about getting hype because I want to go to this place, but I can't. I'm very, very saddened by this news. Uh, and James, where can they find you, man? Well, you can check my uh, Scamovies late the, the Tumblr.com blog where uh, I update it weekly and uh, keep an eye out because starting May something very special is going to appear on that blog. And oh. you can also uh, follow me on James Cork, uh, James Lower Dash Cork on Twitter. All right, awesome, awesome. And you, Ro? You can find me at my Twitters at Rulicious underscore Arts where I post my thoughts and other people's art or my gallery at RuliciousGallery.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. And you can also catch us on com. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been James Corp. I am Relicious. And this has been B-Pen Dragon. 
And I'm Woodrow Wilson, the 28th President of the United States. Wait, sorry, I'm Flip Saute. <laughs> I mix that up all the time. I'm sorry. You almost fooled me. You almost fooled me there for a minute. <laughs> anyway, and we will see you on the next podcast. Bye bye. You are not Markiplier, Ron. Shut up.